All right, so I found using defont.com uh, a few different typefaces that were similar to what I was sketching and was interested in. Geomancy was one. It's a little dramatic, but it has those pointed ends, but I like the A's in it quite a bit. And I like the G. And I like, I don't love the E's, but that R might be fun. You know, the G-R-Y is really cool in it. And then the other was American Captain, which works well for the N's and the T's. Actually, it works just fine for the A's, but it's kind of generic. The L's, and then the S's, I would probably soften a little bit. So those might be ones I can modify to make this work. What other options do I have? Well, I've got these now in my font book with this Mac, so I can use those in Illustrator, and I'm gonna show you how that works. So why don't I do this? Why don't I open up my sketch with Illustrator? And because it's a raster, it's a scan of my sketch, I could trace over the top of this, but I can also type over the top of it. So while Illustrator is opening, I can also think, well, how much do I want to be inspired by this and by these colors? I could open this up in Illustrator as well and use that as kind of a guide. So I'll do that. But again, I want to make it my own. So I'm just using the research to get inspired by all this stuff. Now, all of that's well and good. Coming up with a good standalone type title flag is important. But I also need to go back to Photoshop and sketch, or in my sketchbook, kind of sketch where I might place this title flag. And that might affect the way I approach it. You know, is it going to go to the left of my illustration? Is it going to go around it? And I like this, except that because I already have kind of this subtle type built into my illustration, it becomes angry water vomiting elementals instead of angry elementals water. So I think I do want to set it up a little bit more comic booky, so it's like presenting a certain character. So I can, just to get a sense of it, let's see, bring my sketch into Photoshop as a mock-up. something kind of like that in the poster. And that would be if I just designed it all by hand. And then I could see how I would just move my post, my spot illustration a little bit lower and then kind of find a good background that goes with it. All right. So angry elementals, this is the water version of it. And it kind of makes a nice cohesive image all the way around. So I might save that for the time being, because this will eventually become my poster. But know how you want to block it out, how you want your type to go with your illustration. All right, so this is now open in Illustrator. Remember, whenever you bring in a raster object, you have the option to image trace it. And in this case, I could use 16 colors, Have it ignore white. And see how it does. It's a few too many colors, actually. Because I'd like the black to all be black. But then I don't get enough variation in, in these. So this is why when we live trace, we usually do it with That looks pretty good with um, black and white intentions because color can get really subjective but this actually looks looks decent so I'm gonna go ahead and expand it just to show you that that's one way I can play with it and then kind of make this my own but that's just using anchors and logo types what I'm gonna do now is select it all copy it 
close this and save this on a different layer. Paste it in. It actually doesn't matter that it's a vector or not. But if I want to steal colors from it later, that can be helpful. So I'm going to put it down there and I'm going to lock it. And I am not going to try to image trace my sketch because it won't go well. It was just a pencil sketch. Even if I really increase the, the threshold, it's going to be pretty messy. And that would take a lot of cleaning up. So Command Z, don't want to try to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is lock that and I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to use the type tools for the first time ever. Now these work in a similar way in Illustrator that they would in Photoshop, that they would in a word processor. But in Illustrator, you can actually turn them into vector outlines that you can modify. So you just click with the T tool and then you type in what you want. I'm going to do all caps, angry elementals with the space. And then as long as I'm on the type tool, I can edit it. So I'm going to make it bigger using the, the point size up here, because vectors use points, not pixels, right? And then I'm going to go from this drop down menu and I'm going to choose these three different ones. So Geomancy was one I liked. And I can actually just type it in as well for the different family of typeface with all of its different fonts embedded into it. So I want Geomancy Extra Bold. There it is. Right. I'm going to lock that. Actually, I'm not going to lock it. I'm going to copy it. Command C, lock it, move up to another layer, edit, paste in place, then use my large selection tool to move it up above. That's just so I keep the same size. Then I use the, the type tool, because you see it's all editable, and it's not um, vector outlines yet. And now I'm going to change it to American Captain. which even though it's the same point size, takes up a lot less room because there's a lot, a much narrower leading between them. So if I want, I can increase that size just to see it more clearly. I can copy it, Command C, lock it, put a layer above. I wouldn't do more than three because you could do this endlessly. Edit, paste in place. But well, this will give me some, some vectors already generated that I can manipulate. And it teaches you how to use type tools, both in Photoshop and Illustrator. And then the third one I was considering is called Fields of Cathay. Though I don't love the serifs, but it might be nice for the, uh, the angry part. All right. Good. So I've got all of those. Now, this is kind of what's cool. What's the one I like the most for the ease? This one, the middle one. So I'm going to go to that one. I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to select it, copy it. You'll see I do this a lot. Make a new layer, put it on top of everything, edit, paste in place. So now I've just made a duplicate of that typeface just so I can do this right click and say create outlines. Now by doing that, I've turned each letter form into its own vector shape. And by doing that, I can select them individually. <coughs> and just like any vector shape, I can modify them. If I use my small selection tool, I can move these anchors around. Why do I like modifying from existing typefaces? Well, because if they're a well-designed typeface, they already have as few anchors as possible. Which is helpful. 
means you can be pretty clean in how you work with them. Much easier than trying to clean up a live trace of what I've already done. So I'm just taking the corners. Now what's one difference between my design and their design? I have a slightly curved back. So how do I do that? I go to the pin tool. And what's called the anchor point tool. And I click on it and I drag and it will turn it into a curve on the back end. This used to be called the convert anchor point tool, but now it's just the anchor point tool. But the problem is I want it flat on the bottom. So what do I do? I hold down this handle and drag that all the way back. So now I've just built in a curve. Now with the small selection tool, I can modify that curve with my handle. So I want it to be more general across the back, kind of like that. Now I also have a slight curve in the top, so I'm going to take that anchor point. I'm going to use the anchor point tool, bring out a curve, very subtle, right? And then use that tool to take out the curve on that side. Now I can turn that off and on, and I can see how that matches pretty closely with what I designed, except the inside is a little bit thicker than what I drew, but I actually like it being a little bit thicker. So sometimes you can learn something from the, the typeface that you're modifying. Okay, next let me take the L and do something similar with it. Now I don't need to copy and paste this onto a new layer because remember in Illustrator, all these paths, as long as they're contained paths, are separate. So first with my large selection tool, I can rotate it. Try to get that back spine where I want. And this is just hand, this is what's called typesetting. I'm placing each letter form where I want it to be because I have a pretty clear idea with my sketch. And if you don't have a pretty clear idea with your sketch, then you can just modify within the type tool. And I'll show you how you can play with kerning, play by adjusting the, the different um, point sizes on different letters just within the type tool before you create outlines for it. And now the only place I want to curve here is right at the top of the L. But do I even want that? So that seems to carry it on kind of nicely and forcefully. So I'm going to leave that for now. All right, so let's say, I'll turn this off for, for the moment. Let's say I wanted to make the most out of this with the type tool. Well, this is my copy that's not outlined yet. So I just use the T to select it. And now I can edit it. And let's say I want, you know, the, the E to be larger than everything else. So I can set its point separately. I want the L to be about that large. Then I want the rest of these to be about that large, which was 70. Now, if I want to play with the space between them, this is a nice shortcut. I can select the whole word, hold down Option, and then use the arrow keys to adjust the letting. So I can spread out the space between them or condense it. But often that's going to, you see, blur the letters together, which I'm actually going to do with mine. But I want to be able to control it individually so I can put strokes around them so that when they overlap, you can still see them clearly. But sometimes you'll find really good solutions this way. Turn this off so it's not so confusing. There we go. All right. So now maybe I want, 